Hello and welcome to round one of the MSCT Padded Suspension Carnacross Series at Piranha. An overcast yet dry day greeted a field of 32 competitors with the usual mix of championship contenders and drivers attending just for the fun of competing. Round one also attracted five junior drivers, five lady drivers and five entrants in the radial tyre class. Round one saw the introduction of a new system for selecting starting order whereby competitors drew their starting order at random rather than being allocated a position based on experience and sign-on times. This was introduced to lessen the effect on results presented by some drivers running higher up the order at every event. A few of the drivers we are tipping to watch this round include Adrian Burns in his VL Commodore, Howard Colvin in his Toyota Corona, last year's series champion Wayne McLaughlin in the Pedders Suspension 200B, Ricky Hunt in the Pro Carb Tirana, and two non-championship contenders, Stephen Turner in his Mitsubishi Mirage, as well as Lee Peterson in his Mitsubishi Magna. Just before his first drive, we caught up with Lee. For your first run out, how are you feeling about today? Oh, just absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Pumped, I suppose is the word. Pumped. 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 All right. Did really well last season. Sorry? Did really well last season. Certainly did, yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you expecting to do as well again this year? No, I'm only really here to have fun, actually. Okay. I'm, I'm, that's all I'm here for. Have um, some fun and show us how it's meant to be done. No, I don't know about that. It's um, really here for Aiden, actually. He's the one that's really keen. So. Okay. I sometimes feel a bit bad driving this because I think, think people would think just amazing things of him if it wasn't me driving this as well. <laughs> As soon as the cars got onto the course for their sighting laps, it became apparent dust was going to be a major factor in the day's event, as Howard Colvin mentioned when he spoke with ex-Tasmanian Rally Series driver and junior driving instructor Aaron Reader. First round of the Carnacross Series, how are you feeling for this year? Oh, nervous and excited as usual. I'm waiting for... I don't, can't believe I'm saying this, I'm waiting for the rain to put the dust down. So, uh, obviously, feeling like you haven't had a run yet, so you're pretty keen to get out there and... Yeah, it's very marbly. Just from the siding run, it's really loose. It's going to there's going to be a lot of moving around. It's uh, it's going to be fun. Should be exciting then. Yeah. The event got underway with a field keen to get out and set some lap times after a four month break over the Christmas New Year period. Early in the day, we caught up with Adrian Burns, one of the drivers to watch this season. Adrian, you've just come in from your first run. How'd the car feel? How's the track looking? The track's uh, very slippery, very loose, uh, very dusty. Out there. You got a lot job to see where you're going. The car's going really well. Love it. Think it's going to be a good event today? I hope so. Uh, we had a few little um, mishaps earlier, but um, <laughs> but we're um, getting there, so we're working through them, and that's uh, good. And do you think you're in with a chance of finishing well today? Uh, oh, I don't know about that. Uh, very good drivers here, obviously, so we'll see how we go. All right, thank you. A familiar face sporting a new car this season was Peter Geddes with a new white Bluebird sedan, sharing his car with Nathan Lambert and two guest drivers, his brothers Terry and Mark, giving them a chance to experience some motorsport. First run out, how'd it go? Uh, really good other than a few fuel issues. Yeah, we're running a bit short on fuel when I'm revving it flat out, so uh, yeah, I was running short of fuel a couple of, a couple of times through there. But other than that, yeah, it's just running like a dream. Lovely. And what's the plan to combat that issue? Ah, uh, well, we're going to uh, either replace the fuel filter or just divert around the fuel filter and uh, see if I can get some more fuel through there. Yeah. Peter seemed to get his fuel issue resolved quickly and finished the event successfully. By mid-morning competition started hotting up and we saw some competitors getting caught out by the conditions at Piranha. How are you doing? Not so good on the second run. First run was a bottler but screwed the second run up. The second run you had a bit of an incident with some tyres. What happened there? Oh, they jumped out in front of me. <laughs> How are you finding the course? Oh, it's rough, but it's wicked to drive, yeah. Having a good day overall then? Yeah, very good, yep. Some of the competitors were having better days than others, although it wasn't all smooth sailing for everybody, as Aaron Reader found out when we sent him to talk to some of the drivers over the lunch break. So lunch break now, we're just going to have a, a quick chat here with one of the competitors, Let's see how he was going this morning. Yeah, pretty good. Very slippery. Um, very slippery. <laughs> but good fun, really good fun. Yeah. Had any incidents this morning? We had nudged any tyres or we had any mechanical failures? No, no, clean run, clean run today, yeah. going well. Oh, that's good to hear. And uh, where do you think you are in as far as the fuel's concerned? Do you reckon you're in the top half or the bottom half? Oh, round about the middle, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, good luck with the uh, after lunch. You look like you're going pretty well out there this morning. Um, dusty, but hanging on all right? Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty good. Pretty soft in some spots. Yeah, it's pretty fun. 
Yeah. You haven't had any issues with hitting tyres or mechanical failures or anything this morning? No, I had not, nothing go wrong at all, so it's been pretty good. So you've had a clean run? Yeah, yeah oh, it's all that's good. fantastic. All right, well, good luck with the last half of the day, and uh, let's hope you finish somewhere up near the top, eh? Thank you. And across round one. Um, new car, mate. How's it going out there? Uh, it's actually broken. It's on the trailer. A <laughs> um, little bit too much horsepower. It's um, snapped the engine clean out of it. So engine mounts and... But oh, geez, that's that's not good. Also, too, I know you said some nice rally tyres on there. They uh, they working all right? Oh, they were working really nice, actually. <laughs> Got them off a good mate of mine. Yeah, oh, well, that's disappointing that you're on the trailer for the afternoon. You're going to uh, celebrity drive someone else's car, are we, or not? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I've achieved today, which, number one, was to see what the car was going to do. So, um, yeah, I know I'm pretty happy. It's 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 not quite there, but you've yeah, got a little bit of work to do. But once it's sorted out, it'll be fine. So it should be good to go for... Uh, Good for go for round two then. I hope so. Yeah, should be. Two competitors not in their usual car were Kevin and Jack Quigley as their Nissan Bluebird had failed only days before this event. Both Kevin and Jack managed to secure guest drives for this round. You're not running today? Not in your own car. What happened there? Killed the bird last night. That is terrible. Yeah, number three went out with a bit of a problem last night. We thought we were done and dusted, but someone offered Jack and myself a nice little ride. I've got driving Adrian's VL, and uh, Jack's driving Fraser's um, Toyota, which is behind us. Running around behind you, there, as we speak. Um, that's fantastic. So, uh, you enjoying the Commodore? Obviously, a bit, bit different to the Bluebird. May have a slightly bit more power than maybe what you're used to? Just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Grip's an issue in the rear, not in the front. <laughs> Having to terms with it, though? Well, times are improving. I just don't want to bend it. Oh, that's probably fair enough. He just put some tyres on it for me, some new ones. You thought I was getting a bit taily earlier. I did see that. I've had a look at these tyres. They are, um, well, they are rally tyres, but they no longer have any blocks left on them. It doesn't help the grip situation. Not on canvas, no. No, nah, not at all. Not at all. So we've got some fresh black stuff. We'll try and keep it going. Even though he was not using rally tyres on his Mitsubishi Mirage, we were still tipping Stephen Turner to be driver to watch today. You've had a couple of runs now. How are you? How are you finding the track? How's the car performing? Um, it's pretty slippery today, actually. I haven't been here for a while now since the last round last year, um, so it's definitely a lot slipperier than I'm used to. Um, that aside, though, it's a lot more fun sliding around, so and the car's holding up well. So oh, that's that's good to hear. Have you been watching the times? Who do you feel your competition is? Um, I haven't really been watching the times, but I know uh, Lee and his son. And I've been having a good battle, so yeah, swapping times all day, I think. So, yeah, see so how we go. <laughs> all right, awesome. Thanks. The fifth and final course of the day combined two laps of both north and south track, and with the times being competitive as always, this did lead to a few mistakes from competitors trying to make up a few seconds. The first to slip up was Bradley Trenum in the Petters 200B, who found himself sitting on top of a tyre wall. Justin Nicholson was the second competitor to find the tyres, although his expedition didn't cost him as much time. And the third competitor the tyres claimed was Olivia Quill, who used a somewhat unconventional technique to return to the track. Unfortunately, Olivia was reluctant to talk to us about this incident. So as we wrap up the event, the results look like this. For the junior class, in third place, Lachlan Greenwood in the XL. Second placed, Kirsty McLaughlin in the Petters 200B. And first junior went to Aidan Peterson in the Magna. In the ladies class, third place also went to Kirsty McLaughlin. Second place, Renee Quill in the VL. And first lady was Anne Leslie in the Gemini. That just leaves outright. And in the outright class, third outright, Wayne McLaughlin in the Petters 200B. Second outright and on radial tyres, Stephen Turner in his Mitsubishi Mirage. And first outright, Lee Peterson in his Magna. Yeah, it's been uh, really, really good. I'd actually just like to... Um dedicate this one to actually uh, Howard Kershaw from Autocraft that died about um, 10 days ago. 